The Pope arrives in America, a conservative pontiff, millions of faithful, and no shortage of controversy. Also tonight, where is Michael Jordan's father? He's been missing for three weeks. And at the Pentagon, a general apologizes, but says he still wants a new policy on marriage and the U.S. Marines. This is the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather in Denver and Connie Chung in New York. Good evening. The spiritual leader of America's 58 million Roman Catholics is right here in Denver tonight, bringing with him a message of peace, hope, and respect for life. It is Pope John Paul III's visit to the United States, and President Clinton was waiting to greet him. When he arrived on a flight from Mexico, it was only minutes until the Pope addressed one of the hottest and most divisive moral issues in the country, speaking out against abortion. The ultimate test of your greatness is the way you treat every human being, but especially the weakest and most defenseless ones. The best traditions of your land presume respect for those who cannot defend themselves. If you want equal justice for all, and true freedom and lasting peace, then America defend life. The main reason for John Paul's visit to the United States is World Youth Day. Young Catholics from all over the world have come here to Denver for the celebration and, of course, to see the Pope. As Scott Pelley reports, Denver has never seen anything quite like it. It's the largest gathering of young people in America since Woodstock. 170,000, the biggest event ever in Colorado. If anyone's ready to go into battle, I think we are. Denver's been planning for a year and a half. There's security for Pope, President, and protests. If we haven't planned for it now, it's too late. Paramedics! Paramedics to Paramedics. cut through crowds. A lot of people are fainting, heat exhaustion. Divine guidance through unholy traffic and even a line for rumor control. Denver Pope line? No. Mayor, what keeps you up at night? Oh, on occasion, I wonder if we have enough uh, porta potties or uh, barricades, if people have enough places to sleep. They don't, not nearly enough places to sleep. Hotels are full. 4,000 Italians are parked in this garage. Ah, la schiena! Too many problems. Like uh, water. the fila. The bathroom. <laughs> I prefer to sleep in a bed. Well, let's all go out there and have fun and uh, be a part of history. Any questions? Yes, how to pay for it all. Police overtime alone will run a half million dollars. $39, that's it. Here is the official merchandise. For the first time ever, the church is covering costs by licensing the Holy Father on souvenirs. The biggest seller, the Miracle Mug that reveals the Pope when it heats up. Is that a miracle, really? The... I think that it changes. I'm sure that it is. <laughs> Papal profits are no joke. The church gets half of the proceeds from things like this, probably hundreds of thousands of dollars. And it's estimated that Denver businesses could take in as much as $100 million through the miracle of merchandising. But that's beside the point to the pilgrims who washed cars and sold pies to get here. It's going to be something you may not never get to do again. God, man, I think it's an experience of a lifetime. And an experience Denver won't soon forget. With four days on the world stage, the Mile High City is counting on its meticulous plan and at least a small leap of faith. Scott Pelley, CBS News, Denver. A still developing story here tonight on the East Coast where we have news about the father of basketball star Michael Jordan. James Jordan has been missing now for three weeks and an investigation is underway. Giselle Fernandez has the latest. Basketball star Michael Jordan's father, James Jordan, shown here in a recent interview, was last seen at a friend's funeral in eastern North Carolina July 22nd. One week ago, his vandalized Lexus 400 was found off a wooded road in Fayetteville. The tires and stereos stripped, the windows smashed. After identifying the car's owner yesterday, the Cumberland County Sheriff's Department filed a missing persons report.
We processed the car last night, the latent prints also for lubing all the cars, see if there's any presence of blood. Those tests were negative. Are these your hands? Mm -hmm. Jordan Sr. may be best known to many people through this commercial with his three-time MVP son. He was reportedly on his way from Charlotte to Wilmington on a business trip. Michael Jordan, who led the Bulls to their third straight NBA championship in June against the Phoenix Suns, could not be reached for comment. The team says it had not been notified that Jordan Sr. was missing and had only heard the rumors about the abandoned car. Police do not know if any foul play is involved here. They do, however, say it is unusual for Mr. Jordan to leave without telling anyone. What makes this so mysterious is that it wasn't the Jordan family that reported him missing. It was the police. Again, Michael Jordan could not be reached for comment. We do know members of his security staff have flown to Fayetteville. Giselle Fernandez, CBS News, New York. Love and marriage won a battle today over the U.S. Marines. The Corps commander tore up an order to ban married people from enlisting, and he apologized to the commander-in-chief. More from David Martin at the Pentagon. The Marines are always looking for a few good men, but they went too far when they announced they would start looking only for single men. The message directing that beginning in 1995, the Corps would no longer accept married recruits was labeled routine. But it was a ticking bomb, and it went off last night just after the president had finished unveiling his new chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Learning about the anti-marriage policy from news reports, the president was said to be astounded. And the Secretary of Defense quickly directed the Marines to cancel an order that was intended to squelch the soaring divorce rate among young Marines. I, there may or may not be a problem, but I think that whatever this, uh, this, this regulation is clearly, clearly wrong. Today, an abashed Marine Corps Commandant ate crow. Well, I blindsided him on this, and I'm not, it's not one of my prouder moments in history here. The order went away, but the problem has not. I was out seeing the world, doing things while she was at home uh, with a child, and uh, I didn't have input into my child's life, and uh, we just grew apart, and it, it, it happens a lot. It happened to Virgin Clark and her husband. And on his wedding finger is his Marine Corps ring. He is married to the Corps. But the solution of banning married recruits struck almost everyone as worse than the problem. Yes, maybe the divorce rate's too high, but he ought to look on, at the family support policies. The Marine Corps had some of the worst family support policies. If, if they don't want to have married Marines in the Marine Corps, might as well make it like the French Foreign Legion. You know, you just ain't getting married regardless. The flap also highlighted another problem. How could such a controversial order have gone out a week ago and only now come to the attention of the Secretary of Defense? Secretary Aspen says he'd like to know the answer to that one, too. David Martin, CBS News, the Pentagon. U.S. policy on Bosnia may be at a turning point. After weeks of saying the U.S. was doing all it could do, Secretary of State Warren Christopher now says it is in the U.S. national interest to prevent the strangulation of Sarajevo. This came with a new warning to Serbian forces to come down from the mountains overlooking the capital or risk Allied airstrikes. Barry Peterson has the latest from Sarajevo. It was a day of dangerous confusion over an issue that may bring American warplanes into this conflict. Are the Serbs withdrawing from Mount Igman fast enough and far enough? The answer depended on who was asked. At the Geneva peace talks, the Serbs insisted they were the good guys. As of 8 a.m. today, there are no Serbian troops on Mount Igman. They're lying, charged the Bosnian Muslims. The people who are paid to know, the UN, said late tonight the Serbs appear to be holding positions they had agreed to give up. The UN says it will inspect the mountain tomorrow. UN troops moving in to take control of the area met Serb soldiers waiting for word from the top. I'm just a soldier and when, when the ride order we will, we will go. UN commanders in Sarajevo have resisted airstrikes but now think tough talk may just help. Anything that will help to accelerate the withdrawal process is helpful and appreciated. The airstrikes must be okayed by the UN chain of command, but the Americans say that won't be a problem. We're all certainly satisfied that, that uh, given the urgency of the question and given that it's a military operation, that the command and control procedures could be implemented very swiftly. Impatience with the Serbs is nothing new in this war, but the threat of airstrikes makes this time different. The West telling the Serbs that this time, the gun is cocked. Barry Peterson, CBS News, Sarajevo.
Straight ahead on tonight's CPS EP News, live from Denver and New York, modern history's most popular pope, fighting hard for the soul of his sometimes skeptical flock. And also tonight, NASA, Murphy's Law, and a last-minute discovery on the launch pad. You know, a carnival cruise is the best vacation value going. You can enjoy fun days at sea, fun-filled nights, fabulous food. Oh, boy, you can say that again. Great, Scott. Willard, what are you doing out here? Kathy, I'm having the time of my life. Take a three-, four-, or seven-day vacation on Carnival, the most popular cruise line in the world. Boy, I can't wait until the midnight buffet. You think you'll have any room left? What are you, a comic? <laughs> To get rid of stains on your carpet, even old stains, you can get creative, or you can get scientific with Carpet Science. Carpet Science has a unique emulsion cleaning formula that gets out old stains, like red wine, grape juice, mud, coffee, even spaghetti sauce. Getting rid of old stains? Hey, it's not rocket science, it's Carpet Science from SC Johnson Wax. On his way here to Denver, President Clinton stopped in St. Louis today to meet some good Samaritans. The president paid tribute to 18 men and women for acts of heroism during the Midwest floods. He also signed the $6 billion flood relief bill into law. New figures from Germany show that attacks on foreigners are still increasing despite a new law designed to shut out refugees seeking asylum. As Tom Fenton reports tonight, it's part of a growing trend throughout Western Europe to just say no to immigration. Obviously, we had a problem with that particular story. Overnight storms touched off a new round of flash flooding in the Midwest today. As much as eight inches of rain fell in some places, knocking out power, closing roads, and forcing more people to evacuate their homes. In many cases, the water was gone as quickly as it came, and rivers continued to recede throughout the Midwest. Administration officials say President Clinton has decided to lift the ban on rehiring thousands of air traffic controllers. They were fired 12 years ago by President Reagan when they refused to end an illegal strike. Lifting the ban is largely symbolic since the FAA has a hiring freeze on. Another big setback for the shuttle program today, NASA's latest attempt to launch Discovery on a satellite delivery mission was another failure. Correspondent Diana Gonzalez has the story from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. T minus 10. Nine. All systems were go for the space shuttle Discovery until seconds before takeoff. Three, we have a cutoff. NASA believes a faulty sensor caused the engine shutdown that abruptly ended the launch. This was the fourth failed attempt to get Discovery off the ground. We've had uh, three scrubs and a delay, and every one of them was a totally independent event. They weren't related to each other. Nevertheless, there seems to be a worrisome pattern here. In the entire history of the space shuttle program, there have been four aborted launches after the engines were fired up. Two of those incidents have happened in the last six months. Shuttle watchers say this has been less than a stellar year for the program. They've only gotten one flight off this year, even close to being on time, and the other flights have been racked by numerous delays. That's disappointing in anybody's book. But on the other hand, you want to launch safe. NASA will investigate if perhaps budget cuts might be a contributing factor. But experts here say more than likely it's just a run of bad luck. This latest delay will push back another launch attempt for at least three weeks. Diana Gonzalez, CBS News, the Kennedy Space Center. Duke University researchers have taken a step toward solving the mystery of Alzheimer's disease. They reported today that people with a specific gene pattern show a 90% risk of developing the disease by age 80. It means genetic testing could be used to predict a person's chance of getting Alzheimer's. Still to come on tonight's CBS Evening News, a sign of the times in Europe. It now reads, no more room at the end. My basic love of dogs and my experience breeding dogs makes me enjoy my career as a veterinarian even more. David Qualls, top breeder of champion Siberian Huskies and doctor of veterinary medicine. We give our dogs pedigree as a source of meat in their diet. 
When you open a can of Choice Cuts, there's big meaty chunks and a rich brown gravy. You can really smell the meatiness. Pedigree contains no soy. Pedigree is a very digestible, very nutritious dog food. For my money, Pedigree is the best dog food you can buy. Pedigree. Developed with vets. Recommended by top breeders. Last week really scared me. My dad's stomach was really bad, but he wouldn't admit it. He has this thing about doctors. I was afraid he had an ulcer. And you know what? The doctor said my Lanta. It was indigestion, the kind that needs really strong medicine. My Lanta is strong medicine, strongly recommended. It's the antacid doctors recommend most. My doctor said my Lanta. Also available in tablets and now gel caps. Of all the things around your house that need batteries, there's one thing that needs a good, fresh battery most of all. See your Allstate agent for a free home fire safety brochure. And please, check the battery in your smoke detector often. Have you ever read your daughter's diary? This mother did. What did you think? It said, I killed my little sister. Eye to Eye with Connie Chung tonight. Political violence is rising again in the black townships of South Africa, where almost 17,000 people have been killed in nine years of fighting. Nine of the latest victims were buried today near Johannesburg. A youth leader of the African National Congress told the crowd that blacks should stop fighting each other and, in his words, direct those bullets against President de Klerk. In Somalia today, U.S. troops clashed with a hostile crowd in the capital of Mogadishu. Demonstrators threw rocks at a convoy of American military vehicles in an area controlled by warlord Mohammed Adi. The Americans responded with gunfire and at least three Somalis were wounded. New figures from Germany do show that attacks on foreigners are still increasing, this despite that new law designed to shut out refugees seeking asylum. As Tom Fenton now reports, it's part of a growing trend throughout Western Europe to just say no to immigration. All across Europe, the hunt is on for illegal immigrants. Frankfurt Airport police now stop passengers at Plainside, checking the passports of those who don't look Western and well-heeled. Would-be immigrants are detained at the airport to be sent right back where they came from. This is Europe's equivalent of the Rio Grande, Germany's border with Eastern Europe. On this side are jobs at $10 an hour or more in Western Europe. On the other side in Eastern Europe are dollar an hour jobs if they can be found at all. German border police use night sights to try to catch the migrants who flood across this frontier. Until Germany's widely abused asylum law was changed this month, they could stay for years. Now they're deported at once. Like America, Europe is trying to stem immigration in response to popular pressure. We have seen uh, some very ugly episodes in Germany recently, and we don't want to go the same way. Some of the measures are draconian. The Greeks are making wholesale roundups of poverty-stricken Albanians. There are no lengthy appeals. 25,000 have been sent back across the border in the past few weeks. France has announced a policy of zero immigration. Police have blanket authority to check anyone's ID card in the search for illegals. Foreigners once tolerated because they did the menial jobs Europeans didn't want are not welcome now. We needed them uh, in the 70s, and now because, of course, of econo uh, economic problems, we want them to go home. But it's hard luck for one of the largest groups waiting at Europe's gates, refugees from the Yugoslav Civil War. The West doesn't want them. The East Europeans can't afford to keep them. That means that eventually people do not have the possibility of finding asylum anywhere. These Muslims from former Yugoslavia have no homes to return to at a time when no one else wants to take them in. They're caught in a dead-end street. Tom Fenton, CBS News, on the Czech-German border. Coming up on tonight's CBS Evening News from Denver, Eye on America. Tonight, a special report on a rash of trouble facing the Pope as he meets with church leaders in the USA. Chicken to Remember begins with apricot preserves from Smuckers, a taste you'll never forget. Jams are naturally fat-free, under 20 calories per teaspoon. Chicken never tasted so good. With a name like Smuckers, it has to be good. 
The facts. Just the facts. When you buy a Price Fister, you get far more faucet. Starting with a fabulous engineering inside, on top of which they add fashion galore. Far more faucet for far less money. Which is why nothing, in fact, compares to Price Fister. The fabulous faucet with a funny name. Because you never see it coming. Then it comes at the worst time. Diarrhea takes you out of control. Introducing Pepto Diarrhea Control Caplets, a whole different medicine from Pepto Bismol. So powerful it often stops diarrhea in just one dose. No other caplet stops diarrhea better. Take control in one dose with new Pepto Diarrhea Control Caplets. Why is Tux Medicated Pads the brand of hemorrhoid relief hospitals trust most? Because when hemorrhoids flare up, Tux provides soothing, cooling relief on contact. Tux, the brand hospitals trust most. How do you calm a baby who's uncomfortable with colic? Tips any parent will love. And the entertainment rundown on what's hot and got everyone talking. Tomorrow on CBS This Morning. The staff you will see the Pope carrying here in Denver is a symbol of his role as pastor, a shepherd of people. Well, John Paul will find much of his American flock gone astray, disagreeing with and violating fundamental church teaching. Our Denver-based correspondent Bob McNamara has tonight's Eye on America. Through him, in every Catholic church, with him, in every congregation, in him. A clash. In the unity of the Holy Spirit. Roman Catholic rites and American sexual realities. Premarital sex. Homosexual activity. Birth control. Abortion. Divorce. Celibacy. This Pope has made human sexuality such an absolute issue. He may be modern history's most popular Pope, but to many Catholics, his ideas on human sexuality are out of touch. He believes birth control is sinful, abortion, murder, premarital sex and homosexuality, immoral. And he has demanded that church members and other church leaders fall in line. We have the capacity to be responsible for ourselves and our sexuality. And that has been the teaching of the church for 2,000 years. You grow up Catholic and, and you always feel guilty about just everything. It is agonizing. It's you're torn between right and wrong. It's it's very confusing for me, especially in these times. I personally have a problem with a complete ban on birth control. A 1968 document outlining church beliefs on human life dictated the ban on birth control. Catholic scholar Janet E. Smith says the church shouldn't reverse the rule now. I don't think it can any more than it can relax its ban on adultery or abortion or genocide or rape. That these are not the church's laws, but these are God's laws. What we do here is we, we, we try to just continue a discussion. Thomas Fox is the editor of the National Catholic Reporter. What we are not sensing from our leadership is compassion and forgiveness. What we're getting from the leadership are rules and regulations. The church will simply not survive. Women are walking in droves. Shattering the stained glass ceiling for Catholic women is just part of the church debate on sex. Polls show Americans believe that a changed role for women could lead to more relaxed policies for all Catholics. You as sisters have a tremendous task within this convent. Catholic nuns have always been the most concealed and yet most visible women in the church. You can give up everything and still have life. But nuns have no opportunity to serve in higher positions. In your surrender to God. They cannot be priests, conduct mass, or make policy decisions. Most American Catholics think that's wrong. Power cannot be exclusively held by men in this church. Really Maureen Fiedler is a member of the Sisters of Loretto. And until we treat women as the equals that we are in the sight of God, until we have that in the institutional church, we're not going to be able to resolve the issues of sexuality. The Lord be with you. 
To young people, the issues of gender and sex seem connected. Especially like on birth control, you know, why? And moral questions hit close to home. You know, the church says abstain, abstain, abstain. That doesn't fit in our society today. People aren't encouraged to think. They're encouraged to be blind followers. For American Catholics, it is a crisis of conscience, a fight for the soul of a faith. For many, it is a battle over a belief that's become as hard to live by as it is to leave behind. In Denver, Bob McNamara for Eye on America. And that's our news. Coming up on Eye to Eye, we'll have an intriguing mystery for you about the death of a four-year-old girl and a shocking discovery in her big sister's diary. And what do people talk about on payphones? Join me for some fascinating eavesdropping. Eye to Eye, tonight at 9, 8 Central Time, here on CBS. And CBS News coverage of the papal visit will roll on here in Denver right on through the weekend. For the CBS Evening News, Dan Rather reporting tonight from the great state of Colorado. Thanks for being with us. Good night, Connie. Good night, Dan. Good night, everyone. My baloney has a first name. It's O-S-C-A-R. My baloney has a second name. It's M-A-Y-E-R. Hey, I love to eat it every day. And if you ask me why, I'll say... You could give your kids a baloney made from less than 100% pure beef or one with fillers. The question is, why would you? Because Oscar Mayer has a way with B-O-L-O-G-N-A. For as long as anyone can remember, the Roadmaster name has graced only automobiles of great strength and security. Buick Roadmaster for 1993 is no exception. Consider, for example, the protection of Roadmaster's full perimeter frame, its V8 power, anti-lock brakes, and driver airbag. Buick Roadmaster, perhaps the world's best value in a traditional luxury car. Okay, here's a real nightmare. Imagine a stove made of glass. What a greasy mess. But it's the perfect job for new glass and surface Windex Clear. See, some all-purpose cleaners leave a cloudy residue. New Windex Clear has a unique degreasing formula for a clean that's crystal clear. So say goodbye to cloudy residue. Now for all your surfaces. There's new glass and surface Windex Clear for a clean as clear as glass. From Messy Johnson Wax. At 5 a.m., all the Millers can think about is that first get-you-going cup of coffee. That eye-opening, fill-the-kitchen aroma of Folgers crystals. It all begins with mountain-grown beans, fresh brewed, then crystallized, for a deep, dark, rich coffee just waiting to become your welcome to the day. There's no other coffee that kicks off the Millers' morning like Folgers crystals. The best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. CBS News. After they saw baby Jessica being taken away, this adoptive couple and thousands of others got scared. With the case of baby Jessica, it makes you wonder what's going to happen next. Could they lose their little girl too? Connie Chung has their story on Eye on America tomorrow on the CBS Evening News. This is CBS.